The arts and crafts movement began in the late 1880s with the revival of handicrafts. The movement sought a simpler, more fulfilling way of living. It was admired for its use of high quality materials and for its emphasis on utility in design. Fears about industrial life caused a positive re-evaluation of hand craftsmanship. The movement did not promote a particular style but it did critique the replacement of workers with modern machines. William Morris was one of the founders of the movement. He, along with other founders, were tired of excessive Victorian architecture and the machine-driven industrial age. Morris and his followers wanted to return to a pre-industrial handmade society, making many custom furnishings and well-thought-out designs available to a wider range of classes, or the common man. The practitioners of the movement strongly believed that the connection forged between the artist and his work through handcraft was the key to producing both human fulfilment and beautiful items that would be useful on an everyday basis. As a result, arts and crafts artists are largely associated with the vast range of the decorative arts and architecture as opposed to high arts of painting and sculpting. William Morris is known for his history of repeating patterns. He emphasises the crucial role of the continuous growth of curved lines. Morris's works suggested to the viewer not only the part of nature which to his mind the patterns represent, but encouraged the viewer to go further and acknowledge what lies beyond. He continually aimed to represent the inextricable connection between humans and nature. Morris had a strong belief in the value and dignity of craftsmanship, which is closely related to the theory of the intrinsic value of work. Have nothing in your house that you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. Morris, along with architect Philip Webb, designed the first arts and crafts building, which was the residence for Morris and his family. The house represented a sharp contrast to suburban and country Victorian residences, most of which were elaborately and pretentiously decorated. Frank Lloyd Wright's well known for creating a harmonious and cohesive space. The arts and crafts movement powerfully informed his architectural practice and shaped the work of his contemporaries all over the world. Wright believed that furnishings should be seen as part of the whole composition and should have a grammar of its own. If he could not find the appropriate piece of furniture, he would design it himself. He used natural colours to bring in the outside, creating a seamless transition from the landscape throughout the building. Wright created his own unique floor plans based off the concept he calls organic architecture, meaning that each structure was built in harmony with its surroundings. He is well known for his bungalow and prairie style houses built between 1900 to 1917. These houses were low to the ground, had overhangs, terraced and suppressed chimneys and were designed to be accessible and affordable to a wider variety of social classes. Walter Burley Griffin and his wife Marion Mahoney were employed in Frank Lloyd Wright's Oak Park studio. This period of employment was an informative time in the creation of both Griffin and Mahoney's personal architectural styles. Griffin is well known for his plans and concepts for the design of the city of Canberra. Walter and Marion Griffin laid out the city to take advantage of the beauty of the natural landscape, designing the city around its hills and lakes. Griffin is also well known for the 15 houses he designed and built in Castle Craig. Each house was carefully located and built using local sandstone or the prefabricated concrete building system designed by Griffin. Each house was placed on individual bushland lots to harmonise with the landscape and minimise their impact on the natural environment. With over 60,000 continuous years of habitation, Indigenous Australians understand the patterns that compose the land. Their art is repetitive, sensuous and interpretive, alike to the patterns created by William Morris. Indigenous artwork is generally painted in plan and expresses the nature of objects and place rather than the view as seen and expressed by the artist. Peter Stutchbury's work is largely informed by the years he spent living in Central Australia. Each of his works focuses largely on the environment that surrounds the place people choose to live. Building specifically to its surroundings, the plants, the weather, the water, the formations of rock and soil beneath, and incorporates traditional Indigenous building and living techniques into his informed architecture. Peter Stutchbury is an Australian architect located in Sydney's far northern beaches. The experience of the land and ways of dealing with it and adapting to it is at the heart of his architecture. He 
scientific study in detail of the competition of our landscape reveals the repetitive patterns and marks of sand, stone, native grass and trees. There is an overall strength and beauty in the way these elements repeat and change in direct response to the composition, to the climate and the ge geological conditions. These ideas link directly to the principles and values, values of William Morris, Frank Lloyd Wright and Walter Burley Griffin. Peter's work evolves around the Australian benign climate which facilitates the dissolution of the boundary between inside and out. He has designed walls that slide away completely, corners that fold out and roofs that open up to the sky. Setting up an, an immediacy between architecture and place, users and climates which aids the reduction of resource consumption by humans. Where possible, he uses recycled and sustainable materials. His designs are organic, avoiding trends and instead being true to the landscape where he is designing, this being a common thread throughout the arts and crafts movement. An example of Stutchbury's work is the Avalon House, which is featured in the film at many different perspectives. This design was created around the client's want for a family house. It features an integrated facade and structure with a skillion roof that connects the building with the site and highlights the glazed effect which sits at ease with the surrounding canopy. From my personal experience living in this house for almost two months, I can comment greatly on the functionality, economic sustainability, and its surreal connection to its exterior environment. Each material used supports the sun, the light, the wind, the rain, the various amounts of bushland that surround the block of land, and the noise, whilst also continuing to be a family home. There is no excessive ornamentation. Each piece of furniture, artwork, upholstery and materials used inside was obviously clearly thought out and is there with a purpose. The tall glass section windows that line the entire house complement the steel and aluminium, which constantly makes those living inside feel connected to the native landscape that surrounds the home. In the last few years, increasingly sophisticated methods have led to an abundance of choices for consumers, but with that comes a loss of individuality and quality, for example, IKEA. Many people are rejecting machine post products in favour of handmade items from independent makers. This social trend mirrors the original arts and crafts movement of the 19th century, when people advocated for a return to traditional craftsmanship during the Industrial Revolution. This allows many contemporary artists and designers to make a living from their craft, an option that wasn't easily possible pre-internet.